Today's scripture reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 through 21. Hebrews chapter 13, 7 to 21. Please join me in verse 20 and 21. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of the animals, of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burnt outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good, and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us. For we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge you the more earnestly to do this in order that I may be restored to you the sooner. Read together. Now may the God of peace to both again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Good morning. You have no idea how glad I am to be here with you this morning. No idea. After having spent 12 days in, in the hospital and having so many people take such good care of me, it's refreshing to be in the middle of God's people worshiping. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Nick and the staff. You've done yeoman's work, brother. <clears throat> I couldn't be in two places at once, and where I was wasn't the place I wanted to be. I appreciate all that you've done. I appreciate all that the staff has done. You're in good shape with your staff. Very, very good shape. And I want to thank those who brought food. Uh, I needed some good food, and I got some. <laughs> and that was good. That's what I needed, and uh, that... Uh, that was exactly what the Lord gave to me. Brenda and I, we're no strangers to leaving places. As a matter of fact, missionaries have pieces of our hearts scattered throughout the world. We really do. And we're leaving a large chunk of our hearts right here. Big piece. 
bigger than I know how to tell you. And I hope you'll um, forgive me if I seem a little emotional, uh, but uh, I am a little emotional this morning. Saying goodbye is never easy. It never is easy. And yet it's part and parcel of who we are as missionaries. It's what we do. And so this morning I wanted to share some things with you about parting words, about finding your contentment in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You will find no contentment any place else. The only place to find contentment in life is in a living, loving, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The, the writer of the book of Hebrews, I think it's the Apostle Paul, but maybe that's just me, my foolishness. <clears throat> the writer of the book of Hebrews, uh, as he writes, he's talking about remembering to find your contentment in Christ, in Christ alone. Only in Christ will you find contentment. I can get this going here. Well, we're still trying, but it's okay. I'll turn it on, maybe it'll work. <clears throat> and one of the things that he wants us to always remember, five ways, we, five ways in the Greek language of saying, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We, we can't put that together in English. I, I don't know how to do that in English, uh, to say five different ways. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the Lord has said that he will never, ever, 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 ever leave us nor forsake us. This is why we have our contentment. We have our contentment because we have our Christ. We have our contentment because we have our relationship with him. We know that he is faithful in all of the, in all of the things that were going on in the last couple of weeks. Even before I went to see the, the doctor, as I was laying in the bed groaning and moaning and Brenda thinking she should take me to the emergency room. As I was lying there on my bed, the Lord spoke to my heart very plainly and said to me, it's not the fact of your faith. No, it's my faithfulness. It's my faithfulness, Doug. I'm faithful. I've always been faithful. I always will be faithful. I always have been faithful. I am faithful. And the fact of his faithfulness, I believe, was what the Lord used to kind of begin that process of pulling me out of the pit. I, I honestly did not know how ill I was. I honestly didn't know. And yet, in the middle of all that, God knew everything because God is sovereign. God knows everything. There's nothing he doesn't know. There's nothing that takes our God by surprise. There's nothing that has him wringing his hands in heaven, wondering, oh, what's going to happen next? He already knows. He knows. He knew from before the foundation of the world what's happening. We don't need to be worried about him being able to keep us or to hold to us. He will never, ever, ever, ever forsake you. When will he forsake you? Everybody's going, huh? When will God forsake you? Ah, okay, we're, we're starting to come together now. Yeah, yeah. Never, 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 never. God will never forsake us because he is faithful. He's always faithful. It's the fact that I know that he is faithful that allows me to go on into a future that I don't know what we face. And it is the fact that I know that he is faithful that allows me to leave you here in good hands knowing that the same Jesus that stood in the book of Revelation among the churches stands in this church. He stands in this church and he's leading and he's guiding, he's providing. Yeah, that's, that's the Lord that we serve. When will he leave us again? 
Never, thank you. Thank you, Armand. I've got one. Can I hear two? Never, ever, ever. He'll never, ever, ever leave us. Another thing I want to encourage you to do. Imitate those who imitate Christ. This church has a history of those who have followed Jesus. This church has a history of those who have been following after him and who are imitating Christ. This church has a history of perfect leaders. No, 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 no. If that's the case, I, count me out. <laughs> Good leaders, yes. People who love, people who care. People who really, really, really care about you. And so imitate those. Imitate those who imitate Christ. How do you do that? Well, you got to know who Jesus is. You got to know what Jesus has done. You got to know that he was self-sacrificial -sacri in his lifestyle. You need to know that he was willing at any time to lay down anything for the sake of someone else. This church has had those kind of leaders. Yeah. Imitate those who imitate Christ. It's way too easy to imitate trash. Young people, are you hearing me? Young people, are you hearing me when I say it's way too easy to imitate trash? Way, 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 way too easy. Way too easy to watch something on MTV or on some other uh, raunchy kind of a situation and say, yeah, I think this is the kind of person I, I want to do. This is the way I want to grow. This is the way I want to live my life. Why? Why not imitate the best? Why not imitate Jesus? Why not? He's our Lord. He's our Savior. Imitate those who have imitated Jesus Christ. That's the way of saying goodbye to people, to encourage them to the high ground, not to the low ground. Are you with me in that? If you're with me in that, shake your head. Let me see. About three people shook their head. Maybe four, Nick. I don't know. <laughs> you know, to aim for the high ground, not the low ground. Anybody can live like an animal. It doesn't take anybody with any strength to live like an animal. But it takes somebody who's committed to Christ to imitate him and to live and lean toward the high ground. And oh my... I put never, I did that for a reason. Never, 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 never. Never, never, never. Exchange religion for your relationship. Now, in the context of the scripture, the context of the scripture is that there were those who were saying that because they uh, had a kind of a religious kind of system there, that they were the ones who were the true people of God. They did not know we have an altar. Our altar is the cross. They do not have that altar. Our altar is the cross. And we can never, ever, ever exchange our altar of the cross for any religious stuff that goes on. You know, let's kill the animals. You know, let's, let's go outside the city. Let's kill them. Let's have our offerings. Let's go through all the worship. Let's do all the stuff, the religious stuff. Never, never, never exchange your relationship with Jesus Christ. Never, ever, ever exchange that for religion. Never. A lot of people like that. You know why? Oh, it looks so good. Oh, what way home? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. I do a lot of stuff. Look how much stuff I do for Jesus. I do a lot for Jesus. Yeah, I really do. Oh, I do a lot for Jesus. No. You see, religion talks about not what we have. It talks about what religion talks about what he, what we do for him. I'll get it out in a minute. Our relationship, we celebrate what he's done for us. He was butchered, butchered on a cruel cross. 
His blood was literally shed on the cross for your sin and my sin. And we celebrate that relationship we have, that living relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Never exchange that for anything. Anything. There, was a church, there were churches of Galatia. I call it galloping Galatianism. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase or not before. I call it galloping Galatianism. The Apostle Paul said to the churches of Galatia, he said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You started out in the power of the Spirit. Are you trying to wind up in the energy of your flesh? Before your very eyes, Christ was raised up like it was on a banner and you could see him. You could see his death. You could see the blood. You could see it. Never, ever, ever exchange that for anything. If you do that, you are trading down. Down. Not up, but down. And let us follow Jesus outside the camp. Did you get that direction? Outside the camp. Where's Jesus? Is Jesus here this morning? I sure am glad he is. I'd be falling out in the... I'd have to go sit down if he wasn't. Yeah. But not only is he here, not only does he want us gathered here, he wants us gathered together as his people who are empowered, who are equipped, who are prepared so that we might go to him outside the camp bearing the reproach of Jesus. You know, being a New Testament follower of Jesus has never been a popular thing. It really hasn't been. Culturally, there is something against every culture that the cross stands in contradiction of. Every culture, every one I've been a part of, and I've been a part of several of them. Let us follow Jesus outside the camp. It's all in your scripture. I hope you're following along in your scripture. But you can see we're following Jesus outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Outside. I feel good about some things. Yeah, the hand of God. Wow. Couldn't believe it. About 5.30 this morning, Linda said, are you going to be able to do this? I said, we'll see. 7, 6.30 came, can you do this? I said, we'll see. 7.30, can you do this this morning? I said, we'll see. We'll see if it's going to happen or not. Yeah, but that's not the most important thing. Did you see all these other people? Did you see that? And names that were called out that weren't here? You, you... I want to cry. You have been given kingdom building blocks, kingdom resources, kingdom assets for the sake of going outside the camp. Not just the holy huddle, not just we can kind of gather together, you know, it's kind of like. Kind of like the couple that prayed and said, uh, God bless me, my wife, our two kids, we four no more, amen. Did you get that one? Somebody got something on their cell phone too. And I don't know why, but it's okay. Not just us. It's not just us. It's them. For God so loved the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever didn't say some who meet the criteria that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Who's that whosoever? I don't know. Who is it in your life? I don't know. Might be the person that uh, scoops up Shifan and, and um, sends it to a pastor sitting in a, in a hotel where he's so sick and needing something to eat and about to die. 
It might be somebody who's just selling you something. We don't know. We don't know who the whosoever's are. But God knows. God knows. Let's go to him. Let's go to him. Let's go to him. So let's go review just a moment, please. Where's your contentment going to be found? Oh, it's going to be found in Pastor Nick, right? Sorry, Nick. <laughs> that didn't work. Actually, the bones are stacked this high with pastors who thought they were going to make people happy. <laughs> doesn't happen that way. Find your contentment in your relationship with Christ. He'll never, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. Never. Five ways. He said it five different ways of saying in the negative. I can't say it in English. He'll never leave you. When's he gonna, when's he gonna leave us, Armand? Never. Yeah. Imitate those who imitate Christ. Have the best role models, not the worst. Never exchange. Never, ever, ever, ever exchange religion. Religion is what we do, we think. For God, for this relationship that celebrates, celebrates what he's done for us. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's our relationship with our coming king. And let's follow Jesus. Let's keep following him outside the camp. Amen? Let's stand and pray together. Father, we want to give you thanks for this day. Lord, I praise you for letting me get out. I thank you, Lord, for letting me be among our people, your people. I praise you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy for every wonderful thing you've done. Lord, as we look into our future, we look to you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, looking to you in all things. In Christ's name I pray, amen. We're going to have a verse of invitation, and in this verse of invitation, if God has spoken to your heart and you're willing to establish a relationship with Christ, this would be a good time to do that. If in your life, heart and life, you have gone back to a bunch of stuff, you know, of, thinking about all you've been doing for God instead of what God's done for you. Maybe it's time for you to repent and to bring yourself to the Lord. This is a good time. It's a time of, of gathering as a family and letting God speak to our hearts. I'm going to ask Pastor Nick if he'll be down front. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit down before my legs give out.